Today in 14 Victor Echo, we're going to sit around and invite our first guest onto the show, Dean Syracuse of Flying Eye Sunglasses. And regular glasses. And now regular flying glasses. Eyes, flying eye glasses. I was going to say not regular glasses, eyeglasses. Or if you want flying. to really get fancy off the There you go. <laughs> Stay tuned and join us on 14 Victor Echo. <laughs> Welcome, Dean, to the VR Hangar. Thanks, you guys, for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> so one of the things that we're really hoping to do with this channel as things go on is invite some of our really interesting and cool friends to, or Dean in this case, <laughs> to uh, join us in the hangar and uh, kind of talk about all things airplanes and just life in general. So yeah. uh, here we are. Dean, um, how did you get in introduced into flying? Uh, into flying, oh my gosh. Uh, my dad was a pilot when I was a kid. He had some unusual airplanes such as helio couriers, which are six passengers stole short takeoff landing airplanes uh, built for the CIA. Interesting. <clears throat> and that's another story. Uh, he wasn't <laughs> the CIA, but, okay. but, but, uh, but the airplanes, their airplanes were designed for that. Um, but uh, so I flew with my dad when, I, when he was a kid and a lot when I, when he was a kid when i was a kid and i uh, uh he retired and when i was in college and, and sold his airplane and moved to hawaii and so he wasn't flying anymore and in my uh in my late 20s um i developed a fear of flying as an adult dean afraid of flying right it's now I, I met you much later on so this is kind of exactly. a shock for me so <clears throat> what happened was I, I, I was, I was road and track magazine staff photographer back in the late eighties, early nineties. And, uh, and then I had a commercial production company. I directed car commercials for the ad agencies for the national ad campaign stuff. Kind of reminds me of the time we shot a, a couple pictures when you try to oh, sell yeah. your car in Craigslist right. and right. people exactly. wouldn't believe it because it was too legit. The, it was like, yeah, no, I was, he calls me up one day and says, can you drive a stick? I'm like, it's Dean. I'm not going to ask questions. Yes, I can. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm driving down the road. He's taking pictures so you yeah. can sell his car. And yeah. uh, you never did sell that car, did you? No, I did. Oh, you did? Oh, you yeah. Found it? yeah, I sold it. Yeah, there's a uh, Cadillac ATS uh, stick manual. It was great. Man, uh, those pictures look amazing. Yeah, and but I, I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> so I was I developed this fear of flying, and I talked to an airline pilot friend of mine, uh, and I told him what my problem was when I was flying on commercial flights, traveling around the world, photographing cars. He says, oh, you're a control freak and go take some lessons. I said, what do you mean? Said, go take some lessons. You'll, you, you are a control freak and you don't understand how it works. And, and he was right. Yeah. I went and took lessons and, and realized all of the things that I was scared of. Don't be scared of. Um, all there, the things you didn't know about, you should be scared of. Yes, ex exactly. What were you yes. scared of? Oh, turbulence, you know. The, bumps really okay and, and that's that's the least of the concerns as a pilot really uh unless you're you're flying into a tornado or flying into a thunderstorm or flying into mountain wave that's you know, melissa likes wind shear yeah we love it <laughs> sorry um and and i yeah i learned all the things as a non-pilot aren't aren't things to be concerned about and all the things that you should be concerned about are mitigated by being careful, uh, don't fly in thunderstorms, don't fly in bad weather, make sure you're not tired, you're in good health and good spirits, and your aircraft is is running well, and do all that, and it's pretty darn safe. And uh, you know, the, the other thing is you learn, when you learn how to become a pilot, you realize that it's not the engine that makes the airplane fly, it's the wings. Mm -hmm. The engine just makes it go up, and, and the wings allow it to continue to fly even if the engine quits. Um, Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it, 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 all of those things you, you, you uh, are mitigated, and, and and I turned a fear into a passion. And I've been flying. I got my license in in the late nineties. Okay. And uh, been flying ever since. Was it kind of consistent from when you started flying that you stayed consistent flying, or did you have any long breaks in there? I didn't have any real long breaks uh i had i've had a few breaks owning aircraft but 
when I got my license, I bought a Skyhawk and put a thousand hours on it in the first five years of owning that. Oh, wow. And realized I needed something faster. <laughs> was, well, 200 hours a year because I was, I, I grew up in Texas and I uh, was living in California at the time and I was using the Skyhawk to go back and forth between Texas and California. Well, that's a long flight. It's a long, it's, it's, yeah. and you do that in the summer. No. And, well, because <laughs> it's hot and bumpy and all that. But it's so slow that by the time you get to from California to um, uh, El Paso, which is halfway, mm -hmm. by the way, um, it's it's uh, it's it's thunderstorms in the afternoon. You those afternoon yep. build ups in uh, thunderstorms. Well, so I'd have to spend the night and and land in Deming or something like that, and spend the night and wake up early and get go on the next ne on to the next destination to ho to Texas. And um, I wanted something faster, so then I was flying a Grumman Tiger for a little while. That's the twin, Pre right? No, it's a single. Oh, it's a yeah, twin. single. Uh, single engine, fixed pitch prop. Um, Fixed gear. What's nice about it is it's at the time was the fastest fixed pitch fixed gear airplane. Hmm. Cruise 140, 145 knots all day long. Um, Burning what about 12 gallons an hour? Nine and a half. Oh wow. Oh yeah. It's a, a, yeah, uh, it's got an o, O360 180 horse. Wow. And a uh, really efficient little airplane, and they're great. But uh, of course, as we all do, want to go faster. Wait, what? How can we uh, burn more dead dinosaurs? Exactly. <clears throat> and and uh, Aviation Consumer had this two-volume set of, of uh, uh, books called the Used Aircraft Guide. Mm -hmm. And literally, you could, um, basically, it's articles on every, just about every production airplane out there. And, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly of every airplane. And I read it cover to cover for years. And uh, I wanted something faster. I wanted high performance complex, but I wasn't impressed with the safety record of um, a lot of high performance complex airplanes out there. The reality is it's usually stupid pilot tricks. It's usually people not doing, uh, not flying the airplane properly, not being careful, whatever, yep. and, and, uh, and, and usually not the airplane. Um, but be that as it may, I wanted something as safe as possible, and I ran across this airplane called the Myers 200. Mm -hmm. Um, owners say it's the Ferrari of the sky. Uh, if you can find one, buy <laughs> one. Um, they only made 127 of them back in the 60s. Uh, Al Myers designed them and built them in Tecumseh, Michigan uh, for a number of years. And then Aero Commander bought the line. And instead of, Al Myers was building them one at a time. You want to you buy one of my airplanes, I will build you one. Yep. But it was nothing on spec. It wasn't an assembly line production. Air Commander wanted to just, wanted to do assembly line production, and so they literally created a duplicate set of tooling and jigs uh, for assembly line production in Albany, Georgia, and they built those for two and a half years, and all told, 127 were built. Wow. No ADs in the airframe. It's the only high performance complex that's never had an in-flight airframe failure, as in nobody's ever broken one up in flight, um, and and. And it's it's a steel airframe covered in aluminum, like a like a Mooney. Only unlike the Mooney, the Mooney is a one piece uh, built up aluminum wing, which is very very strong. Uh, they're great airplanes. Um, but the Myers is a tr forty one thirty steel truss bridge that goes out past the gear, and that's where the wing attach points for the rest of the wing are mm. out past the landing gear. So the gear is attached to steel, so you can land really hard, and you're not worried about um, you know a aluminum. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're great airplanes. Um, and uh, I spent a couple of years looking for one. I joined the owner's group. I flew one at a fly-in, at Myers fly-in, okay. an annual fly-in. Once I flew one, I was hooked. It's, mm. they're, they're, they, they're fast. They, uh, they are slow. Uh, it's got 40 degrees of Fowler flaps on tracks like a Cessna, so I stall at 52 knots, which is you know, about 10 knots slower than it has to. Wow. Um, and, um, and I cruise 190 knots. Burning what? Uh, 14 and a half, 15. Now you have an IO 515. I do, yeah. <clears throat> Some of them have a 520. Yeah, that's how they came is with a 520. I have a 550, which is 310 horsepower. Um, yeah, so at eight or eight to 10,000 feet, I'm usually burning, oh, anywhere from 14 to 15 and a half gallons an hour, 
rich a peak and I'm doing 190 knots true. Excellent. Uh, you, you spent a lot of time around all the Myers and you were probably the single most educated person still flying a Myers about the fleet of Myers, the history of Myers aircraft. I went all in. You kind of went all in. Uh, 127 built. Yeah. How many do you think are flying now? Uh, right, so let me we, rephrase that. How many do you know are flying now? That's hard to say, but we think there's um, probably 90 or so uh, 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 that are that are on the register. Okay. Um, maybe 95 that are on the, on the register. Some of so these, a lot of owners keep their airplanes long after they lose their medical. They can't fly anymore. It sits in a hangar. It's still registered. Yep. It's oh, no. Long out of annual and all that. But but we think. There's probably 75 or 80 of them that are actually actually flying. Okay. And uh, and I've flown, I think I'm up to 20 of them that I've flown, uh, personally. Huh. And uh, and they're, uh, I've got 1,500 hours flying them. Yep. And um, I was gonna say I think I've been in at least three of them with you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah I think so. so. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Great plan. Now <laughs> most of you know I'm my main plane right now is a Beechcraft Bonanza, a 1980. A36 turbocharged and carries a lot more than me. <laughs> yep. Dean and I go back and forth and, you know, in, in, in good fun about <laughs> um, what's the best plane. And I have a rule because I have lots of friends who like to say their plane's better than mine for whatever reason. <clears throat> I love all airplanes. Me too. If it flies, I was about to say, if it has an engine and it flies, I don't care if it has an engine. Gliders, Gliders. are awesome. Yeah. I don't care if it has wings. <laughs> Helicopters are, if it flies, I'm in. So not a problem. Um, Oh yeah, we did Oshkosh one year. We we met about halfway up, and uh, oh my we gosh. flew in formation the last leg, um, uh, where we tried to out climb a uh, cloud bank that was coming in. <clears throat> it wasn't a thunderstorm, no, because we wouldn't <coughs> try to out climb a thunderstorm. No, no, we would no, never do that. Yeah. But uh, I no. do believe y'all told me it was a thunderstorm. Wait, what? Shut, but, 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 no. Oh, edit no. edit that out. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was like, yeah. what do y'all yep. mean cloud bank? You told me thunderstorm. <laughs> uh, Oshkosh antics, uh, trying to get in. Um, exactly. But uh, we we, we found, stayed VFR the whole time. That uh, that I can say. Yeah, that we stayed VFR. But we did find the altitude at which the turbocharger in the Bonanza far outperforms the non-turbocharged Myers. Run out motor in that particular Myers. Yeah. Also, but yes, turbocharging yeah. makes such a huge difference at altitude. Oh my yep. gosh! Like. But yep. that was a fun flight to, it was. to get oh, into yeah. Osh and um, yeah, it's true. the year we ended up landed Fond du Lac and just stayed there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was crazy. It was really busy. So. Um, but it, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, you, you mentioned any airplane, the good airplane with engine or without. I just flew, um, gosh, not long ago, uh, a 152. And I hadn't flown a 152 in years, and I had so much fun. It, those are just fun. Every yes. once in a while, I like to get back. 152, you don't get in it. You strap it on. Exactly. Kind of wiggle in. The <laughs> yeah, planes exactly. wiggle in and get the, exactly. the seatbelt on. Yeah. But oh, I love it. It, it. it really doesn't matter what kind of airplane. Just getting yep. back to yep. the basics sometimes is just so much fun. I will say that that I need, okay, I need a bunch of airplanes. Yes. Because the Myers or the Bonanza is a traveling machine. Yes. It's for going places. Our engines burn a ton of fuel. They're very efficient at going places. When, yes. it, when we're at altitude, mm -hmm. we're not burning a lot of gas. But when we take off, our engines are burning, well, I'll tell you, my engine burns 30 gallons an hour on takeoff. I'm closer to 35. Yeah, right. So you're not gonna go do local, uh, local airport flying, which yeah. I still love doing. Yeah. And I'll do anyway sometimes, but yeah. getting into a Skyhawk or 152 or you know a fixed pitch fixed gear yep. engine with a 100 160 horse motor yep. or an rv 14a yeah exactly it's <laughs> something that you can just get in <laughs> seriously and it's something you just get in and go have fun yep. you know, I, I like that i think that's a great yep. idea which is one of the reasons why we're um <clears throat> when we build the rv we're not planning on getting rid of the bonanza because okay. i'm in a partnership with that it's yeah. really easy for me to stay in that <clears throat> partnership uh, they, they they will serve different missions. Uh, the exactly. RD is going to get us places. Oh yeah. But be economical to hop around <clears throat> locally. Sure. Just won't carry what the Bonanza does. Boy, that's. I mean, sure. I could put this bench in the back of the Bonanza. I can't carry what you can carry. That's <laughs> yeah. That you know, six seats and and your payload way way more than I can carry. Yeah. I mean, we've going to Oshkosh. We load that Bonanza yeah. bottom to top. That's awesome. 
weighing everything, weighing the two toothbrushes to fill so it up. Is it is it if it fits, it ships? Is that how that works? It's almost. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> not the exactly. I learned that the hard way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the balance that I worry about more sure. in the Bonanza, yeah, especially with our forty pound uh, all electric air conditioner that's in the tail of the airplane. <sighs> Um, so okay, I'm jealous of that too. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth the, it the um, yeah. weight and balance gymnastics yep. uh, to have sure. it here in Texas. But That's for um, sure. yep. it's it's not quite if it fits at ships, but it gets the job done very well with yep. uh, a little bit of planning. Yep, That's awesome. Awesome. And if you can convince me to leave my some of my shoes at home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you, the the one thing that uh, that you guys have also learned about, especially flying Bonanza, is that people always weigh more than stuff. I yes. mean, unless you're wearing, bringing gold bars or lead weights or or steel something, yeah. generally speaking, you can fit a lot more stuff. You'll cube out sometimes yep. even before before you. Gross Wait. out, yep. um, and uh, that's the thing with my plane. For a number of years, uh, when I go to Oshkosh, uh, I could when we had a small booth, I could take out the back seats and I could fit all of our glasses. Uh, we have folding tables and everything into the Myers even, um, and and go to go to Oshkosh, go to Sun and Fun, and, and be able to sell our our glasses at those yep. events, and uh, and we would cube out before we'd gross out because they. I'm not one, our glasses don't weigh anything, and uh, and two, uh, they're small, and they, yep. so it works out well. I know a couple of years I've taken boxes of your glasses uh, yes. up to Oshkosh That's or right. uh, different air shows that you exactly. couldn't make it to. Exactly. So speaking of your glasses, yes, um, I have. Well, I don't have my sunglasses. Oh, you mean these? I do have my pair of sunglasses. Here, let me get them for you. Yes. <laughs> now. I've known Dean for several years uh, about the time that you started flying eye sunglasses. Yeah, um, right. And back when you had your first first generation of glasses, yep. which um, we still sell them. We do. We don't sell a lot of them, but yeah. we do still sell them. I admit I wasn't a huge fan. Um, they did the job. Uh, so yeah, they they did the job, but uh, these work a lot better. Yeah, but it uh, it it proved a point that. Glasses can be a challenge in the cockpit environment, yep. especially with our active noise reduction uh, headsets. Yep. These, I don't, you probably can't even see on camera, they're so thin. Yeah. Um, fit under your headsets and allow them to seal and doesn't cause that pressure. One of my most miserable points of flying is when the sun goes down <clears throat> and I have to take these comfortable glasses off from under my headset and put my regular glasses on because I'm right. just not going to wear contacts. Right, right. And, and life gets worse. Well, and you are not the only one who's been asking for ophthalmic glasses, and that's what they are. So when you wear, uh, we have sunglasses, obviously. We've had those since since we introduced the, our company and started our company in 2013. And it's just been sunglasses uh, because that's what I needed. And, it, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's what... It's what prompted me to do this in the first place. But since then, since that point, now all of our glasses are prescription compatible, but at the end of the day, a lot of people just needed prescription glasses, like what you wear, yeah. and people needed them. Well, we're a small company, and it takes a long time to be able to afford to pay for the molds to make to make our glasses. So it was many years before um, we were able to do uh, our eyeglasses or ophthalmics. And, and, and even then, we couldn't just come out with one frame because, uh, uh, you know, sunglasses. Yeah, you need different shapes and and, and sizes. Uh, but you for eyeglasses, you really need different shapes and sizes because everybody everybody has different size heads. Mm -hmm. It is shapes. not one size fits no, all. No, <laughs> exactly. So we introduced with this uh, the our new line of ophthalmics uh, last August. We have two uh, uh, more feminine shapes and two more masculine shapes. And uh, and oh, and during that time, we uh, we also introduced these magnetic clip-ons, so so you can fly at night or IMC and uh, during the day. And uh, um, I am like looking forward to these. Yeah, yeah. And so and like all of our glasses, millimeter thin and totally unbreakable. You can't break them. It's part of our patent. Uh, the material that we use, it's proprietary to us, and allows us to mold the, the glasses a millimeter thin. Uh, one of the uh, one of the 
aspects that is a bonus is that they are very, very light. And historically, uh, with, with glasses, light usually meant cheap. Mm -hmm. And the material we use because uh, the material we use is, is the material we use because of the thinness and flexibility and, and, and unbreakability. The bonus is that they're very light and they're unbreakable. So they're very light. And so when you wear them, they're so light you forget you're wearing them. And they, 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 don't, um, they don't bother you. They, yeah. don't, they don't irritate you. They, they're, they're no distraction to, to, uh, to what you're, whatever it is you're doing. Which is why I like flying during the day than at night now. Let me try those on yeah, real quick. Yeah, I think these are the, yep, these are them. So I think um, in a very, an episode near us, you'll probably see me with uh, these prescription notes. Yes, exactly. And then snap those on. Right. And so those are uh, those magnetic clip-ons. What we have uh, mirrored lenses. We have solid gray and and, uh, and gradient gray. Mirrored, right? Yeah, so it's one of the mirrors. Yeah. Oh, these are yeah. the same ones I have. Yeah, you know, those are the Kestrels. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, and you know, so the gradient is is nice. It's a personal preference of mine. I like them because it makes it easier to see the panel, and it's still blocking out sunlight. Um, one of the things you want to look for in, in any glasses is you want to be able to block the sunlight as much as possible, mm -hmm. but anything darker, there's different categories of sunglasses. Anything darker than a category two, get a category two. Um, and, and, and in some states, uh, you're not allowed to drive with really, really dark sunglasses mm -hmm. uh, because you can't see very well. <laughs> um, and, and so our gradient tint is at the top is actually a category three. Um, it's just that it's uh, lighter and lighter at the, as, as, as it goes down. So it just makes it a lot easier to see the instrument panel. Okay. And it's really blocking out that sunlight without hindering you from being able to see. So would you say those are darker than the mirrored? They are. They are? Yeah. Yeah, at the top, at okay. the very top, at the part where the sun is gonna be in your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we're going to have a link in the description of this video. Yes. If you want to go check out Flying Eyes sunglasses <laughs> and now their new eyeglasses. I'm not going to say that O word because... Ophthalmics. How do you spell that? Ah, yeah, so don't, worry, don't worry about it. Not going to make them do it. Uh, O-P-H-T-H-A-L-M-I-C. <laughs> Ophthalmics. But go ahead and check out the link in the description. Uh, anybody using that link, you'll get 10% off. So uh, it's a great deal that uh, Flying Eyes is helping us out with. I, I've been flying with them for a year. I can't even count the years now. Yeah, quite uh, a few years. When the, uh, my original <laughs> pair of these were the um, uh, one of your first runs uh, right. when you started yeah. this line. Yeah. Uh, they, lawnmower? Lawnmower. Yes. Um, there is a You said they were indestructible. <laughs> yeah. Well, we. Do say they're indestructible, except, except <laughs> lawnmowers. I, I will say a lawnmower ran it over. These are the lenses that the lawnmower <laughs> ran over. <laughs> the lenses survived. Uh, the frames did remarkably well, but it was a lawnmower. Yes. It was a little, a little chewed up. <clears throat> yeah, because the material that we use is so durable, uh, we have a lifetime warranty against uh, uh, against breaking them. And, yep. and it really is difficult to break them. Not impossible, yes, yep. usually when they get run over or something, but because it's so rare that we gladly warrant them against breakages, and um, yep. uh, so it, it works out works out pretty well. Absolutely. I've lost these a couple times. These have been uh, taken off in the back of an Uber two or three times. I have always gotten them back. We, uh, we just introduced a, um, a loss protection. Really? Yeah, so before I get to that, uh, our lenses have a one-year warranty against scratches, uh, lifetime warranty against breakages. And people are always saying, you know, hey, what happens if I, I lose them? Yeah. Uh, well, we, uh, even on our website, there is a, for an additional small amount of money, uh, we, will, uh, we will warrant against loss one time. So it's a good deal. Yep. Because people do lose them. I yep. know I've lost them too. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you were there at Oshkosh when they right. didn't make it back from dinner. That's right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm at, at the booth the next day. It's like, well, I know I can get another pair of glasses, but they won't be prescription. And I've got to fly the Bonanza home. 
And uh, That's right. I got on the phone with Uber and I was like, yeah, I've got them. I'll bring them to you. And I was like, awesome. <sighs> happy. I mean, it's like some of the happiest days of my life is when my flat eye sunglasses come back to me. Exactly. That's awesome. And working working out the, the Bluetooth uh, uh, system for uh, being able to find your glasses. Yes. yes. If we can build an air tag into this, <laughs> right? I, exactly. uh, life would yeah. be amazing. You know, it's one of the nice things about having your own business is uh, we're still small, but fast growing. We can do whatever we want, relatively speaking. Yep. And we're, so we're continually doing R&D. R&D for, for not just those kinds of things, uh, but also for frame shapes, uh, lens types, lens colors, uh, new, new ophthalmic frame shapes. Uh, we listen to our, our, our customers, our friends, and they tell us what we should be coming out with next and, and we listen to them and we build them. Uh, I've been a wonderful co-pilot for a while, yes. a long while, yeah. and um, I was getting ready for my first trip to Oshkosh. Yeah. And of course, I wear prescription glasses, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but I didn't want to be the only, you know, person out there who loves airplanes who didn't have the best sunglasses in the world. <laughs> and Ken would go on and on and on about how awesome his sunglasses are <clears throat> under his thing and that I needed it under his um, headphones. Yeah. And I needed to get some. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's a week and a half. There's no way right. I can get a pair of flying eyes. Right. Which prescription? Which prescription before uh, Oshkosh? But I happen to know this guy, wait, what? <laughs> uh, Dean of Flying Eyes, um, <clears throat> connected with him, got some amazing sunglasses with prescription, and <clears throat> had an amazing flight to and from Oshkosh yeah. with my headphones. Yes. What exactly. usually happens to me, anything over about an hour with my regular glasses or my regular sunglasses that are like the, um, oh my gosh, I even forgot what I call them. Ray-Bans? Ray-Bans, because I used to wear Clubmasters. After about an I hour. I wear glasses, by the way. They're, they're cute glasses, yeah. but yeah. under a headset or underneath the motorcycle helmet, after about an hour, I've got a terrible headache. Because it hurts. It's like... Yeah, because right it's like pushing into my yep. head. Yep. And so what I end up doing is taking uh, off my glasses and just being blind. I'm not the right. pilot. Right. That's you know, sure I'm, you're not yet. Not yet. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. Um, that interrupts my nap when she does that. <clears throat> so uh, I don't have to pay attention. So. Um, Kid in FAA. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> so I ended up either mm -hmm. going without glasses. Sure. Um, just yeah. so that my I would feel more so comfortable. You, yeah, you wouldn't be in pain. Exactly. But ever since I've gotten my flying eyes, it has just changed everything. I can have my glasses, I can see. That's awesome. And you know, that's really funny because that's when I decided to get my private license and... Oh, uh, really? Um, Oshkosh. At Oshkosh, nice. I made the decision that I wanted to build an airplane and I wanted to learn how to fly. Nice. That's and awesome. I was like, well, I already got my sunglasses. I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. But um, I am super excited to try out the ones the without glasses. tint, the regular eyeglasses. Yep. Um, I'm sure my instructor will be happy that I'm not doing this. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can see again. <laughs> yeah, someone fly this while I change my glasses. I was like, this like, I was like, I literally wait till the absolute right. last second to take my sunglasses off mm -hmm. because yep. it's just like yeah. our level of comfort. It hurts. As soon as I put on my regular glasses, pretty much my lesson's over. You know, it's funny. A lot of people will <laughs> will, uh, will wear uh, uh, you know avi classic aviator frames. And they think, well, they're aviators. They must be for pilots. And they are. They were designed for pilots in the 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> Aviation, modern. So, so when you see World War II movies of, uh, you know, pilots and, you know, in, with these headphones, those are headphones. Those are speakers. They're not noise attenuating. They're not reducing noise in any way. It's why old pilots are deaf. Yeah. Um, noise attenuating headsets didn't really even happen until the, uh, in general aviation, in the 60s and 70s, and active noise canceling, electronic noise canceling, Bose was the first in uh, 1996. 
and it changed everything because mm -hmm. all of a sudden they were legitimately uh, a quieter. You, you, headsets are quiet for in two ways. Uh, always with clamping force, even bows, even light speed, it's clamping force, even if it's a modest amount. But that clamping force is like a spring up here and it's pressing against your head. But also with modern electronics, it's the active noise canceling. So it's still both. And, and even with that, with regular glasses, you get that, that pressure and pain. That's what it's from. It's a modern problem. Only you know, since the 90s that mm -hmm. this has been a real problem. And uh, it was a problem enough to me that I decided to do something about it. Yeah. I mean, riding the motorcycle at night, right. I, don't, I just don't wear my glasses. Right. right. But during the daytime, I can wear these and we can go forever. Yeah. Wait till you try, wait till you have these. Yeah. And ride them. Uh, so it, as amazing as our glasses are under a headset, it's that much more under a, under a helmet. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. That much more comfortable. Yeah. Well, I love them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I love it. You know, it, it I, more and more often I'm seeing people wearing our glasses um, at, at air shows or when we're at an airport and, and every side it's like, oh, hey, look at that. That's cool. That's neat. <laughs> Did they I'm ever just, recognize you out of the blue? No. No. Uh, that, that, not, the, not yet. I, I like being behind the camera. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, how, how did you get into this? I mean, you're a photographer. <clears throat> yep. Well, and, yeah. Yeah, sort of used to be, I guess. I, I, as a business, yeah, photographer, filmmaker, director. Um, and so so in the in the uh well around 2010 <clears throat> i was getting kind of burnt out uh shooting for ad agencies doing national ad campaign filming stuff for the uh, most of the car ad, ad agencies automotive ad agencies and um wondering what i should do next um and i've been flying at that point for a long time and was i was tired of the problem with the pressure and pain and uh, decided to spend a couple of years, this was 2010, spent a couple of years seeing if I could come up with a solution. And uh, spent those years uh, trial, and tr trial and error and, and introduced our, our first frame shape in, uh, in 2012, end of 2012. <clears throat> and it, as, as um, uh, I wouldn't say they're ugly, <clears throat> but, but as, as simple as they were, uh, it, you know, they were really to, to create a mold for any any injection molding uh, molded glasses or anything injection injection molded. It's really really expensive, <clears throat> and you make the mold and you hope that it is exactly what you want because well guess what there's not a lot you can do about it once yep. the mold's made. It's a big chunk of steel, yeah. <clears throat> and um, so I spent a lot of money uh, with that first mold, and then I get to spend a lot of money on that first production run and see what happens. And fortunately, um, people liked them. And people liked them enough that it was a, a modest business. We did okay every year, made more and more money every year. <clears throat> but uh, I also realized at that time that a couple of things. One, um, there are different size heads and faces and people, and they need a variety of frames mm -hmm. uh, to make them comfortable and uh, make them actually look good uh, while they're wearing our glasses. And uh, yeah, the first frame was just solve the problem first. Um, but also, our first glasses were, were uh, they had interchangeable temples. And you could interchange a standard temple <clears throat> with a strap and cinch, and, uh, and it worked. Uh, it worked well, but you had to actually fumble with the yeah. glasses. You had to think bit. ahead. Right, exactly. <clears throat> well, what happened was the people that bought our glasses loved them so much that they would just leave them in the airplane because they loved the glasses so much and they solved the problem so, so well, they just leave them in the airplane. It was fine. Well, I wanted to, to make glasses that people could just wear at all times mm -hmm. and not have to fumble with anything. Just wear them and they're going to be comfortable. So I spent <clears throat> another three years um, looking for a material um, that that would work. And this material that we found is primarily used in aerospace, um, but it is a material that can be molded really, really thin 
and be flexible and 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 bend without worry about them breaking or or uh, or deforming permanently or anything like that. They uh, the the material that we use it's it's it also requires such high heat and pressure that um, uh, our molds are made out of steel when when s s uh, normal sunglasses are made out of nylon or TR90, which is a type of nylon. Mm. You can that's a, such a soft material that you can use a, you can actually create an aluminum mold, which is gosh a quarter of the price of a steel mold. Right. And uh, and so that was a challenge with these glasses, but and. You know, I, I thought they would be popular and introduced uh, uh, a very modest line of, of glasses in 2017 of our first first uh, version of these, and they were popular. And mm -hmm. so every year we did a little bit better, so we were able to afford to introduce a new frame style. And uh, actually, last year we we introduced more frames than we ever had before. We introduced uh, our all new ophthalmic lines. So that's four glasses, and then we introduced. Um, uh, the Cooper, which is the larger version of the Kestrel, and the Osprey, which is a uh, uh, which is this, and that's a, a narrower uh, uh, kind of a beach style uh, frame, and uh, and these are real real popular. Uh, now. So how so, many different frames do you have now? We have ten. Ten. Yeah, and wow. we'll have <clears throat> we have we'll have quite a few more next year. Uh, we're, we're, like I said, we're listening to the customer of what they want and need, uh, and not just for pilots, but now we're expanding to the motorcycle market, uh, the motorsports and racing market, uh, uh, equestrian, anybody that has to wear a helmet or headset is is our market, and that we want to take care of them. You still do any work with military or? Yeah, actually we have uh, a dozen U.S. Air Force Special Ops Squadron is wearing our glasses now. Uh, A-10 Warthog Squadron wearing our glasses. Oh, no, that, that's bragging rights right, right there. Exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> we like the A-10. <clears throat> I mean, it's really funny. The, the military uh, Air Force stuff that we've sold so far has really been organic. It's just another pilot who discovers our glasses, buys them, and once they get them, they go, oh, crap, i got to get these for the whole squadron. Yeah. And, that's, and they literally call us out of the blue saying, I want to, I want, 50 of your, your glasses. And we give them a nice military discount because we appreciate their service. And um, and and it works out great. And, and they love them and they keep buying more, which is awesome. That's amazing. Our, our next goals, uh, one that I can share is uh, is ground forces. Um, you know, this this frame shape is safety rated. <clears throat> all of our eye, all of our sunglasses use the same polycarbonate lenses for, for the frames, or sorry, for the lenses. Um, but only this one can be safety rated because safety rating doesn't isn't just frontal impact but it's side impact mm. but as a as a pilot you know i'm always not always concerned but i am concerned about the potential of a, of a bird strike for example mm -hmm. or uh things like that and so uh that that's why all of our lenses are the highly, highest quality polycarbonate and uh and even though these aren't safety rated i know personally that that you will do much better with these glasses than, say, glass lenses. Glass mm -hmm. lenses, if you had a bird strike, uh, shattered lens, shattered glass in your eyes would not be a good thing. It's going to be a bad emergency landing after that. Yeah, you may not be able to see to do it. Um, and, and so that's why, as, you know, as a pilot, um, as somebody who does what we use these glasses for, I get to make the glasses how I want them. And, mm -hmm. And the priority is, is once again, I like my airplane, the priority is safety and making sure that uh, our customers are well taken care of and there is, they, they, they have something that will keep them as safe as possible. So. Well, <laughs> I found out about flying eyes because I knew you, but sure. after using them for years, I, and seeing some of the other options on the market, is, you know, I used to be a big Oakley guy. I like my Oakleys. Oakley's a great company. They make great glasses. Um, but but they, they all, don't fit under the headset. No, they don't. And and all eyewear companies other than us are really they are a, a fashion brand. They are mm -hmm. really uh, it's it's a fashion and a look, and that's fine. They they yeah. do great stuff. Um, but I wanted to solve a problem first, yeah. and then create something that's nice. And it's things like how you do the gradient. You know, if you go yeah. out and buy a right. pair of sunglasses at Sunglass Hut, right. you know, the gradient goes at a certain sure. way based upon fashion sure. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. 
you put thought into the instrument panels at the bottom, right. the bright sun's up top, right. let's make the gradient based upon that so you have yeah. the best of both worlds. Well, that's the other thing to consider if you go to Sunglass Hut or, or one of these other, other major uh, uh, stores is that they're all going to be polarized. Yeah. And polarization is bad for not only pilots, but also motorcyclists. Uh, for a pilot, it's obvious we're not supposed to wear polarized lenses because you can't see the instrument panel. Uh, the LCD display in, in the instrument panel or your iPad has a polarization in it. And polarization blocks a certain angle of visible light, and then which is like a comb almost. And then if you have, uh, that's, that's the LCD display. And then you have your glasses, if they're polarized, blocks another angle of, of, of visible light, it makes it black. That's how that works. There's another common belief that polarization blocks UV light. And, and that's not true. It has, one has nothing to do with the other. Um, all of our glasses, even your clear lenses and your eyeglasses mm -hmm. block 100% of UV light. Guess what? We can't see UV light, but it is very, very damaging to our eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, it is why all eyewear, even uh, giving away a little secrets about the eyewear industry, um, good and bad, all eyewear, even the cheapest eyewear uh, is an FDA medical, class one to medical device. They're all required to block at least, oh, I think it's 96% of UV light. Why is that? Well, if you had tinted lenses that didn't block UV light, and that's actually possible, uh, we just don't sell them here in the US, um, then your, when you put them on, your eyes, your pupils would dilate and you would be letting more UV light into your eyes, even though they're tinted. Wow. And that's why all eyewear is an FDA regulated product and they all have to block 90%, 96% of UV light, I think it is. Our glasses block 100% of UV light because, well... Safety. Well, safety, exactly. And the higher you go in altitude, the stronger UV light is. Yeah. And that's really important. So we, we, um, we do that. Uh, it, for any glasses that you buy, uh, I recommend that you, you, you look for the UV 400 logo okay. on the inside of the glasses. Um, what that means is that's a standard. That means that the, these glasses will block at least 99% of UV light. So it's a better standard than what even the FDA requires. Uh, but all of our glasses, because of that requirement uh, of me and all of us flying at altitude and stronger UV light, uh, I wanted to block 100%, and I can do that, and that's what we do. That's amazing. Well, Dean, I really appreciate you sure. stopping by. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> in a month or so, yes, we'll have a little bit more than Sweet. just a um, practice kit here, which we do need to finish. I'm excited. So, um, I do want to make a um, kind of a ritual or a party out of having different guests come on the show yeah. and drive a ribbit. Sure, I so know that. You're one of you're going to be one of the few guests, uh, because you're the, the first one, yeah. who uh, we're not ready to drive a ribbit today. But yeah. that just means you have to come back. Sure. And yeah, absolutely. everyone so, gets to drive a ribbit. So um, can I can I drive a ribbit? Uh, actually, you know what would be really cool uh, is is if, if you had them, uh, you're probably not going to do this, <laughs> but had them drive a ribbit in a place where the, the people can't see it and that you could sign it. I, I, I like that. I, I don't do. Know, I don't know how we do that, and in, and it's an it, before it gets painted. I know exactly. That's well, fine. if it's know, on, on the interior, we'll make uh, sure it's primed yeah. first. Right. So we, we get to sure. go down memory lane of all of our guests at every uh, mm -hmm. annual yeah. condition inspection. Yeah, you, you know, especially I like it if it's in the empanage or something yeah. like that where nobody can see it yeah. except you when you're doing annual. Exactly. That would be really cool. So you know, we, we got quick build wings coming. Nice. So it, the quick update on our kit. Uh, the second kit's coming first, just because Vans produced the fuselage and then kits. And the third kit's coming second. The third kit's coming second, okay. so we're getting the wings so, in uh, summer. Who's on first? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I, logistics at Vans Aircraft has uh, been up in the air a little bit. They are working their tails off mm -hmm. to try to make it work. And they said, look, we geared up production to get fuselage kits out. We got one with your name on it. It will come, we'll take it. Um, we still don't know when we're gonna get our tail kit, which is the first kit. I'll tell you, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm, I'm really happy that you guys are doing a, a, a Vans airplane. Uh, I, I've known a bunch of friends that have built RV 
sixes and eights and tens. And I've seen them work on them, build them, and I've seen how they go together and I've seen how they're designed. I'm really impressed. It, they're, yep. they're great airplanes and I've seen how they, actually I've flown a bunch of them too and they just fly so nice. They're just so much fun. <laughs> they're, they're, it's a really well thought out, uh, not just a kit, but a really well thought out airplane yep. um, that has a, actually for, for if I'm not mistaken, for uh, a, a kit built airplane, has a great safety record too, yeah. which is, I think it's important. Leaving cause of accidents is pilot tricks. Yeah, exactly. And you don't always have that, but. Normal right. aerobatics. Yes, yes. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it, and that's actually the few uh, Myers 200s that have ever uh, been lost have been low altitude aerobatics. Yep. Like, I mean, it's, you're, you're, you're taking the risk on your own shoulders when you do that. Exactly. But yeah, vans uh, just. That's great. To be a kid great airplane, vans. they didn't compromise on the airplane right. part. Yep. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a well thought out airplane. It, it's. Yep. We're so excited. It will start coming together. Yeah, but definitely. Skin Dean, thank you very much of for course. joining us. Happy to. And Anytime. We will see you um, soon. Sometime soon, an yes. episode near us.